I think the number of cases that we've been involved with has increased because there's more awareness of it. Um, people understand that it's not okay to just let these stray cats populate and live on their property. Um, the kittens, much like this one here, are very, very cute. So a lot of people are, are tempted to just keep them around and play with them. And then when they get older, it becomes an issue. Um, we've been trying for a very long time now to encourage people to call us when the kittens are, say, this age, so we have a chance to rehabilitate them. Um, we did have one situation this year, which was fairly interesting. We were working on a farm um, trapping cats. And we did get one adult cat, and when we brought her in to get her spayed, um, the veterinarian realized that she was still producing milk, so she was a nursing mom. So I brought her back to the property the very next day, um, intent on finding her babies. Um, I followed her around the farm for probably about half hour, 45 minutes. Um, she wandered over to a very large pile of hay, and she just crawled in between these bales of hay, and there were her kittens. Um, so I crawled in the, ba you know, the bale of hay behind her, she had flipped right over and started nursing them. Um, to this day, I'm still not aware how they survived. Um, they were less than two weeks old, and just based on my experience here, it just doesn't make sense that those kittens were still alive, but they were. Um, she went right back to nursing them, and we actually have them here at this point um, in our foster program. So when the kittens are old enough and they're weaned, mom will go back to the farm, and the kittens will go up for adoption. Uh, one kitten came in with uh, very bad eye infections and we named her Hempress. She came in with her sister Poppy who was less sick than she was. These kittens were loaded with fleas, loaded with internal parasites and were very, very thin for their age, weighing only a pound. Um, I took them home, got rid of their fleas, treated them three times for their parasite infection and cool compressed uh, Hempress's eye for probably about a week, three to four times a day. Lucky enough, it has gotten better and she does not need to have the eye removed. She does have some scarring, but she is visual. So when I get to the property um, where I'm gonna be doing the trapping projects, I usually walk around and check out the, the environment to see possibly where the cats are congregating. Um, I also need to find out who's feeding these cats um, because I need those, those folks' assistance in not feeding the cats. Um, quite often people feel bad about withholding food, but the cats simply aren't going to go on the trap if they're not hungry. So once we trap the cats, um, getting them back to the shelter is a whole nother, a whole nother circus. Um, the cats in the traps are stressed, um, they're angry, they're scared, and we understand that. Getting the cats out of the traps is a very slow process. We can't just open the door and take them out as if it was a pet cat. Um, keeping in mind some of these are truly wild animals. So they can be rabies vectors. Um, none of them have been vaccinated for anything. They haven't had any health care. So working in direct contact with them can be risky in terms of bites or cuts or scratches. My approach medically with the feral population is a little more urgent. Uh, that's the main area that it would change because we want to get these cats altered, vaccinated, ear tips so they can be returned back outdoors where it is less stressful for them and where they've known. Suffice it to say that when you take any animal out of its natural environment, one that it's grown up in and is used to, and you put it into an unnatural environment, such as one of our kennels, uh, it can cause a lot of emotional distress and a lot of physical distress. Some of the symptoms are absolutely shutting down, not looking at anybody, freezing, having an absent or vacant look in the eyes, not being interested in food, not going to the bathroom. Animals could retreat, they could come at you, a lot of them in our kennel space will try to climb the sides of the kennels looking for a way out. And it's actually very heartbreaking because all they wanna do is go back to their normal environment. Uh, we do try to socialize the animals, so we do work with them periodically during their stay here to see and assess if they truly are feral cats or if they could perhaps be socialized. But it is a very different presentation for truly feral cats as opposed to animals that just need a little bit more love. The average medical cost to care for a feral cat, one feral cat, if it is a female, would on average cost about three to four hundred dollars, and that is if the stay is a week or under. Uh, the medical care that is included, we always give topical treatment to treat for fleas and the first deworming um, and ear mites. Then we give them a combo test, we give them their first distemper shot, we give them a rabies shot, and we'll give them um, an injectable for tapeworms, which is a common parasite for animals that have fleas. 
will clean their ears, will do anything that they need to do in order to go back out and live a happy life. And out of one trapping alone, we have to have had at least 40 cats from the one trapping alone this year. So in terms of the services that we provide here at the shelter, um, there's no fee base. I always joke with people that we'll never turn away a donation, but we don't require a fee for this. So the trapping I do, the spay-neuter services we do, the vaccinations, the microchipping, um, the deworming, the flea and tick medication, everything is done. Um, you know, we just absorb the cost. It's, it's not something that we talk about a lot. Not a lot of people know about these services, so I don't think that the services are are very well supported. We're hoping to kind of get the word out that these things do exist and like everything else we need help with it. So these little guys, this is the um, just the golden age. This is when the kittens come in. They're a little bit shy to begin with, um, but with a lot of handling and time we're able to what we call rehab them um, so they can be adoptable indoor pet cats. Um, we have a foster program here, but we don't have anywhere near enough foster homes for guys like this. So this little kitten, as cute as it is, um, is living here at the shelter. We just don't have the foster capacity for it. So the staff is just working to, to get this kitten the handling it needs. So she and her brothers and sisters will realize that people are good and humans are good. Who rescued who? Was it me? Was it you? I don't know what I'd do. I never found you who rescued. Wake you greet me I feed you you feed